While millions of people use ChatGPT, most of them don't really know what they're doing. So I prepared a list of 24 newbie ChatGPT habits you need to ditch. Number one, using ChatGPT like Google. Let's say you want info about Elon Musk. You might type Elon Musk, but on ChatGPT, if you type Elon Musk, you are going to get such generic results. So instead of using ChatGPT like you would Google, talk to it as if it was a next person. This is a question that you would ask a person. You wouldn't just say Elon Musk. Another bad habit is not renaming your chats. So let's say I wanted to save this discussion. I could do something like caps and now it's much easier to find in the chat history. The next habit you need to ditch is not formatting your input. So instead of having everything in a single long paragraph, you can do new line characters, you can do lists, and you can already see how this looks much better and it's not all just one super long paragraph. Newbie habit number four, using light mode. Like, what is this man, come on. So go into settings, click on theme and click on dark. A super common mistake is copying the default ChatGPT input. Let's say you're replying to an email, like all of us do this, let's be honest. Instead of copying this, make the email more human-like, use a more friendly and informal tone. And like, it doesn't really matter what, what you specify and what adjectives you use, as long as you change it up. Another thing that noobs do, or rather don't do, keyboard shortcuts. You should learn, the first one is this, show shortcuts. That way you don't have to, you know, click on the question mark. This one is super useful. All of these, to be honest, are useful. Again, set custom instructions. Instead of having to go into settings, you just do Control shift i boom, it's right here. But keyboard shortcuts isn't the only feature that people don't know that exists. Let's say you wanna share this to someone else, you would copy it and send it over. That's not the fastest way to do it. What you should do instead is top right corner, share chat, and you get a link. Again, a lot of people don't know that this feature even exists. Newbie habit number eight, not trying different prompts. If you're not getting good results, maybe you're generating some code and it doesn't work, don't give up, just ask it another prompt and try again. Assuming the AI can't do it is such a bad habit and in most cases, it's actually probably your fault and your prompt sucked. The next newbie habit is not using English. You might think that I wanna use my native language, but these language models, they are trained on the internet data. The vast majority of the text on the internet is in English, which means that the performance of the model is by far the best in English. But let's say Czech, you know, I'm from Czech Republic, the amount of Czech text that's on the internet is way less than English or German. That's why you should use English almost always. This ties to the next newbie habit, overcorrecting grammar mistakes. So even if your English is broken and you don't know any grammar, ChatGPT can understand. The prompt starts with two grammar mistakes and most people would probably go and correct them. But ChatGPT does natural language processing and it's a language model, so it understands this perfectly. So if I click, it's completely fine. So just keep writing, don't overcorrect small grammar mistakes because ChatGPT can perfectly understand those. One of the worst things you can do in ChatGPT, which will immediately tell everybody that you're a complete noob, is asking for info from other chats. So now, as you can see, I'm in the Elon Musk chat. So if I ask, why did you include the golden boot? It's not gonna know. See, and there was no mention of it in my previous response. It's confused because it doesn't have access to other chats. Another way to tell that someone is a noob and they don't know a lot about ChatGPT is if they're using GPT 3.5. Now, you might be saying, okay, but David, I don't have ChatGPT Plus. And honestly, that's a mistake because the amount of features you get for 20 bucks a month, it's crazy. Some people can, you know, afford it, obviously, I understand that. But I would say if you're making more than $500 a month, you should invest into ChatGPT because there's so many ways this can save you time and potentially make you more money because you have more time. It's insane. So, so if you've never used GPT-4, man, you're gonna be blown away the first time you, you use it. Now, after you get ChatGPT+, you will see a bunch of options, including the browsing plugin. But honestly, you should never use this because it's super slow. So let's say, find AI news from last week and check out how slow this is. I'm not gonna speed it up. I'm not gonna do anything. This is real time, how, you know, re the real time speed of this plugin. It's insanely slow. That's why, you know, if you still need to search something, you can use Google or ideally you use perplexity. Find me AI news from last week. 
and check this out. Boom. Insane. Less than a second. So this is still browsing. It's like 30 seconds later and it's still searching. Now, everybody knows that you can use ChatGPT as a website, but a lot fewer people know that it's a mobile app. You have to install it because of this button right here, the headphones logo. And what that does is it starts ChatGPT voice. So I'm going to click it. And as you can see, it's this white blob. So ChatGPT, tell me about OpenAI, interesting facts about OpenAI. OpenAI was founded in December 2015 by Elon Musk, Sam Altman, Greg Brockman, Ilya Sutskiver, Wojciech Zaremba, and John Shulman. Okay, but why isn't Elon Musk part of OpenAI anymore? ChatGPT. Elon Musk stepped down from OpenAI's board to avoid a conflict of interest. To be honest, I didn't think this feature would be anything special, but there is something about hearing a voice that's like completely different than, you know, seeing just text on the screen or on the phone. It's like the modality of audio is so much more natural and, you know, so much more versatile. Like you could even use it while driving, just talking to it and learning something. It, it's really insane. So if you don't have the mobile app installed, download it right now. Newbie habit number 15, not using custom instructions. Now it's funny because a lot of people still do not know about this feature. Now, earlier I showed, you know, you can go on into the settings, obviously, and click on the custom instructions, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, control shift I and load up your custom instructions. So if you don't know what this is, it's basically a prompt that you can give to ChatGPT, and it knows that in every single message. So if we go to one of the chats, even this one, you can see the icon at the top. So this chat obviously has the icon, which means that the custom instructions were active. And this is huge because you can specify what you want, what you like, what tone ChatGPT should use. But most importantly, you can tell it the style of responses you want. So let's say you want concise and direct answers, or you prefer table format or bullet lists, or you don't want it to be politically correct. Anything you, you would normally have to repeat in every single chat, you can put it in custom instructions and it's active for all future chats. On the topic of custom instructions, sometimes you want to change them. Let's say you're working on a project that's going to take a couple of hours. Well, in that case, you definitely want to spend five to 10 minutes setting up a new set of custom instructions that specifically for that project. Now, right now, or there isn't any way to save multiple, uh, you know, custom instruction templates. So you have to save them externally. And a newbie habit is not saving them and having to rewrite them every single time. What I did is I created a GitHub repo. So this is my repo and I put the custom instructions in here. Every time I create a new set, I add a new file and you know, I can always access it easily and quickly, but make sure to save your custom instructions because every time you change them, you might want to revert the change and like, you don't have to remember what it was before and you know, rewriting it and all of that. So don't be a noob and save your custom instructions presets. Now, the first time you get ChatGPT Plus, you won't see all of these features. So you might be confused, like how did I get browsing or, you know, plugins. Now, the way to do this is enabling beta features. So you have to click on the bottom left, settings and beta. There you go, beta features. You have to enable this so you get it. If you don't enable it, you're not gonna see it. From every like other week, check it if you don't have any new beta features. If you do, enable them and try around with them because if you don't enable them, you're not gonna see them and you can't use them. Speaking of new features, one of the newest features is GPTV. Now, it's not uh, here, but it's actually in the default chat and this is this icon. So this is insane because it saves you so much time. Let's say I'm here, AI news, whatever, I'm gonna Google and I see an image, right? Okay, this is actually kind of useful, maybe. <laughs> you might see this test and you don't know if it's good or bad. So all you have to do with GPTV is just take a screenshot. Boom, take a screenshot and control V, paste it here and say, what's the result of this test? So one test is negative and the other is positive. Let's do another example. Okay, this one, you know, a random image. What's on this image? The robot has a cocktail shaker, boom, dials and buttons on its body. So like, dude, even like these small details, you know, most people just describe it. It's a robot giving a drink to a human, but it like, look at this. 
it's incredible this feature i'll show you another thing that many of you still do so let's say you know I, i'm going to use one of these templates so this could easily be the first instruction and then you might say you know format it as a table as a table include data do it in python blah 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 and the point i'm trying to make is that instead of trying to write the perfect prompt you know trying to nail it on the first try you should just send it so you just like you can adjust it based on the response so like do not spend three or five minutes writing a single prompt just write something write the basics hit enter see what response you get update it you know improve it send it again do not expect your first prompt to be amazing it's not going to be amazing but obviously you still have to provide enough context so to the earlier example you, as we created a diet you can't just say give me diet because that's not enough context i guarantee a lot of you are using prompts like this where you just don't give enough context and then the response is generic and vague and it's not kind of you know relevant and it's nowhere near as good as it could be if you just included one or two more sentences now this is an interesting one newbie habit 21 is not using ChatGPT enough so what you can do actually is you know when you create new tab in your browser you get the default window the home window most people have this set to probably google or you know DuckDuckGo, whatever search engine you use is you can set this home page to chat gpt that way every time you open a new window instead of going back and fighting your old habits of using google you will see chat gpt right then and there and you will start using it way more the next newbie habit is not using step-by-step -step reasoning so sometimes you might need to have some long prompts and that's okay but make sure to break it down into steps like if i send this it's gonna build on top of each other so if you're trying to give ChatGPT some more complex task that requires reasoning and you know logic it's essential basically to break it into steps because if you don't do that it will try to do everything at once and that's just you know that's just a recipe for tragedy and basically just by doing this you can make the language model much smarter and much better at reasoning another prompting mistakes that noobs do is zero shotting so what that means is basically this is zero shotting so it, that means zero examples but like even here it works you know so like if you like terminator you like aliens and robocop for blade runner ex machina ghost schindler's list the like beautiful like this is relevant you know like this is world war ii another world war ii movie another war movie whenever possible give it three examples five examples seven examples and you'll be surprised how better the results will be now you already know that you should use custom instructions and how to access them but a lot of you probably have custom instructions that are too short and you, you don't need custom instructions you know this long as you can see i'm almost maxed out here i've spent like 90 minutes doing this custom instructions why because i'm going to use this for dozens maybe hundreds of hours in the future and it's absolutely worth it to spend those 20 30 minutes to set up a good set of custom instructions okay let's break it down so hashtag persona this is markdown so you just kind of format it again earlier i told you you should format your prompts same thing here you format it so it knows like okay this part is about the persona I gave it a name this is inspired by the, actually a prompt from nasa and as you can see i made it so that you know it helps me be smarter wiser more knowledgeable so i did persona then expertise m gave it a mission gave it a personality so this is kind of important actually be bold and brutally honest you know normal chat it will be kind of you know passive politically correct you know when you include a line like this it cuts straight to the point and it doesn't waste your time again answer directly and promptly do not waste the user's time you are a long-term thinker you despise short-term comfort you can set this up to whatever you want i set it up for myself but it's absolutely worth it to spend 20 30 minutes setting this up because you're going to spend so many hours in chat and if you have a solid set of custom instructions that suits you not only is going to be the experience better but 
you're gonna save time in the long run. So those were the 24 newbie habits. Again, I had a list of probably like 60. So if you want part two or if you want a similar video, make sure to subscribe and let me know.